Karl Marx predicted that capitalism would commit suicide. The American businessmen are carrying out that prediction. In destroying themselves, they are destroying capitalism, of which they are the symbol and product. And America, which is the greatest and freest example of capitalism man has ever reached. There is no outside power that can destroy such men and such a country. Only an inner power can do it, the power of morality. More specifically, the power of a contemptibly evil idea accepted as a moral principle, altruism. Remember that altruism does not mean benevolence or consideration for other men. Altruism is a moral theory which preaches that man must sacrifice himself for others, that he must place the interests of others above his own, that he must live for the sake of others. Altruism is a monstrous notion. It is the morality of cannibals devouring one another. It is, it is a theory of profound hatred for men. I seem to have competition here. I'll let you go first. Okay? It is a theory of profound hatred for men, for reason, for achievement, for any form of human success or happiness on earth. Altruism is incompatible with capitalism and with, and with businessmen. Businessmen are a cheerful, benevolent, optimistic, predominantly American phenomenon. The essence of their job is the constant struggle to improve human life to satisfy human needs and desires, not to practice resignation, surrender, and worship of suffering. And here is the profound gulf between businessmen and altruism. Businessmen do not sacrifice themselves to others. If they did, they would be out of business in a few months or days. They profit, they grow rich, they are rewarded as they should be. This is what the altruists, the collectivists, and other sundry humanitarians hate the businessmen for, that they pursue a personal goal and succeed at it. Do not fool yourself by thinking that altruists are motivated by compassion for the suffering. They are motivated by hatred for the successful. The evidence is all around us Thank you. The evidence is all around us, but one small example sticks in my mind as extremely eloquent. In the early 1930s, an assistant of Jane Addams, the famous social worker, went on a visit to Soviet Russia and wrote a book about her experience. The sentence I remember is, quote, how wonderful it was to see everybody equally shabby, close quote. If you think that you should try to appease the altruist, this is what you are appeasing. The great tragedy of capitalism and of America is the fact that most businessmen have accepted the morality of altruism and are trying to live up to it, which means that they are doomed before they start. Another contributory evil is the philosophical root of altruism, which is mysticism, the belief in the supernatural, which preaches contempt for matter, for wealth, well-being, or happiness on earth. The mystics are constantly crying appeals for your pity, your compassion, your help to the less fortunate, yet they are condemning you for all the qualities of character that make you able to help them. Evil theories have to rely on evil means 
in order to hold their victims. Altruism and collectivism cannot appeal to human virtues. They have to appeal to human weaknesses. And where there are not enough weaknesses, they have to manufacture them. It is in the nature of altruism and collectivism that the more they use, need a person or a group, the more they denounce their victims, induce guilt, and struggle never to let the victims discover their own importance and acquire self-esteem. Every kind of ethnic group is enormously sensitive to any slight. If one made a derogatory remark about the Kurds of Iran, dozens of voices would leap to their defense. But no one speaks out for businessmen when they are attacked and insulted by everyone as a matter of routine. What causes this overwhelming injustice? the businessmen's own policies, their betrayal of their own values, their appeasement of enemies, their compromise, all of which add up to an air of moral cowardice. Add to it the fact that businessmen are creating and supporting their own destroyers. The sources and centers of today's philosophical corruption are the universities. Businessmen, are both content <laughs> Thank you. That is the most important point. Businessmen are both contemptuous of and superstitiously frightened by the subject of philosophy. There is a vicious circle involved here. Businessmen have good ground to despise philosophy as it is taught today. But it is taught that way because businessmen have abandoned the intellect to the lowest rung of the unemployables. <laughs> All the conditions and ideas necessary to turn men into abjectly helpless serfs of dictatorship rule uh, the institutes of today's higher education as a tight monopoly with very few and rare exceptions. Hatred of reason and worship of blind emotions. Hatred of the success and worship of self-sacrifice. Hatred of the individual and worship of the collective. These are the fundamental notions that dominate today's universities. This notion condition and paralyze the minds of the young. If you want to discover how a country's philosophy determines its history, I urge you to read the ominous parallels by Leonard Peikoff to be published this coming spring by Stein and Day. This brilliant book presents the philosophical similarities between the state of America's culture today and the state of Germany's culture in the Weimar Republic in the years preceding the rise of Nazism. After you read this book, you will know the power of philosophy, and you will know that one cannot play with it as irresponsibly as people do today.